Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about circular dichroism and circular dichroism spectroscopy. Circular dichroism spectroscopy is a very good technique to determine uh, the structural information about a protein, especially the secondary structure of a protein. And also it gives us information about protein folding and lots of other information that we would see at the end of the video. Now, uh, like any other uh, spectroscopy circular dichroism is quite similar so let's see what happens in a uh, visible spectroscopy so we have our sample here in a container and what we would do we would shine light inside the uh, container and some amount of light is absorbed by the solution and some amount of light would be transmitted and the transmitted light would hit a detector And the some amount of transmitted light would hit a detector and we would detect uh, the absorbance of that particular solution and using that absorbance we would understand the concentration as we know from a beer Lambert law so the absorbance would be equal to extinction coefficient into path length into concentration so this is our basic spectroscopy equation uh, from beer lambert law so our uh, circular dichroism spectroscopy is quite similar instead of any kind of light we use here polarized light and so here we have a light source here we have a light source and here we have a polarizer a polarizer is a substance which would polarize the light so when light passes through this light would be polarized and I'm representing polarized light in this form and or when it would uh, cross another PEM it would be converted into two type of light so one light would be Circle, each type of light would be circularly polarized light so we can think about any plane polar polarized light as a combination of two circularly polarized light I mean the superposition of a left circularly polarized light and a right circularly polarized light so here we are representing a right circularly polarized light and here we are representing a left circularly polarized light so we are writing LCP for left circularly polarized light and we are writing RCP for right circularly polarized light. So if you just see in our case the plane polarized light the electric field vector actually vibrates along one direction in the plane. So if it is the direction of the wave propagation and the electric field vector would oscillate in only this direction but in case of circularly polarized light the scenario would be different electric field vector would actually vibrate in both the plane so if we have our electric field vector so it would be a combination of right circular polarized light and a left circular polarized light and when this combination of light right circular polarized light and left circular polarized light enter a sample provided that our sample is optically active that means the sample is chiral some changes in the absorbance would happen and some light would be absorbent and this term is differential absorption so differential absorption means it would uh, like it would absorb the right polarized light in a different extent than the left polarized light so for instance here our right polarized light after absorption the transmitted light uh, right polarized light looks like something this and the left polarized polarized light is reduced in the amplitude so as this amplitude varies 
now after uh, the transmission we won't get a linear polarized light when these two superimposes rather than a linear polarized light we would now get something called elliptically polarized elliptical polarized light and this degree of ellipticity is actually uh, the measure of circular dichroism. So we can think about circular dichroism in terms of absorb absorption, uh, absorption difference. So we can think about circular dichroism in terms of absorption difference. So we have absorption for uh, left polarized light, say AL, and we have absorption for right polarized light as AR. So this would be the measure of circular dichroism. And this absorption for uh, left polarized light and right polarized light would be actually uh, EL minus ER where these are the extension coefficient for left and right polarized light respectively times the path length and the concentration of the particular chirally active substance. So we can say that delta absorbance is equal to delta epsilon times L that means the path length and the concentration and the degree of ellipticity the degree of ellipticity it's actually is the measure of circular dichroism also it is 2.303 difference in absorption of right and left circularly polarized light into 180 by 4 pi so this is the measure measure of the circular dichroism and if we just want to talk about what is a left circular polarized light and the, what is uh, right circular polarized light. So uh, the helix sense is different in both the cases. So here we have what we called a right circularly polarized light. So right circularly polarized light would actually look somewhat like this. This would be the helix sense, and if we see uh, from a cross sectional view, we would see a circle, and the electrical field vector is actually rotating uh, clockwise. On the other side, if we talk about a left circular polarized light. And the helix sense is also different in this case and we would get a cross-sectional view like this where the electric field vector is rotating in a counterclockwise fashion so this is the basic difference between a left circularly polarized light and a right circularly polarized light so I'm denoting it as left circularly polarized light LCP and this as RCP that means right circularly polarized light okay so let's see what are the use of this spectroscopy so CD are used for CD is actually used for protein secondary structure determination so for instance if you want to determine uh, how much uh, alpha helix or beta bladed sheet is present in our protein so CD is a good technique and pH induced or heat induced or solvent induced structural changes could be also detected by our circular dichroism spectroscopy otherwise protein folding and unfolding information could be also predicted by the circular dichroism ligand or ion induced structural changes in the protein secondary structure could be also detected by CD moreover structural aspect of nucleic acid polysaccharides polypeptides and hormones could also be derived from the CD spectra so let's see how the CD spectra for uh, some secondary stru structure looks like uh, normally so here we have our y-axis in our y-axis we have our molar ellipticity so it is termed as theta and in the x-axis we would have lambda that means the wavelength of our light so let's say our wavelength we have 200 220 to 240 and so uh, and 
this is uh, the value of the ellipticity here it is minus and here it would be positive and now the uh, spectra for the alpha helix would somewhat look like this and the spectra for beta plated sheet would somewhat look like this and ultimately the random coil or turns would look like this so this is turns this is beta sheet and this is alpha helix and this is alpha helix so if there are any change occurred after ligand binding or due to any other conditions the basic spectra of alpha helix beta bladed sheet or the turns would be changed with respect to a control if we compare these two spectra then we could get information how and uh, how uh, how and why uh, the changes in the secondary structure of the protein occurred and this is how our cd spectroscopy is very useful to determine any changes in the two degree structure or uh, to gain knowledge about protein folding and protein unfolding so that's all about circular dichroism hope you enjoyed the video please like and don't forget to subscribe please leave your comments thank you